Hello, it's Sarah. I'm going to create for you guys a beaded bracelet on an elastic string. So I've been making bracelets. I have this little box. I haven't, I have a lot of bracelets in here. I've been wearing bracelets because what happened, I went online. I just want to show you one thing and this is nothing against anybody. Uh, well, let's see. So good, it doesn't show where it's from. But this is a black jasper, black lava beads, Hamsa hand bracelet, $17.99. And I like it, but I can make it myself. So $17.99, I just went, and if you get the beads on sale, a strand like this was $2.99. So I'm gonna make, this is amethyst, it's semi-precious beads. It says amethyst, semi-precious, six millimeter. These are sunstone beads. And so I'm going to be able to get at least one bracelet out of here. This one I could possibly get two, depending if I add filler beads and all types of, you know, goodness to it. Um, remaking my amethyst bracelet that I've been wearing. There's a couple styles. I do like to add the lava rocks because they are porous. And you can put, let me see if my... I have them on my um, rose quartz bracelet because I'm, I'm wearing it every day. So this, the idea is that if you have a little anxiety or if you're, you need a little boost in energy, you can put an essential oil on there and kind of sniff it to calm yourself down or to give you a boost. That's the idea. And I like that idea. So that's what I'm um, tending towards. So I have... A couple of lava beads here that I may use I'm not sure um, I like to put two on each side just for starters um, I like the turtle symbol it's really got a lot of different um, meanings behind it but I found today again for $2.99 a whole strand of these little guys so the thing is I can make them for my friends and why not do that instead of just buying one bracelet for $17.99, you know? So, um, anywho, I'm going to use this turtle, which is so cool. I personally wear a 7-inch bracelet. So these are all seven, approximately 7-inch bracelets. So right here I have this marked out. Um, this board, I don't know where I got it or whatever. They're available in the beading section of the craft store. I also have this like a velvet. I think I got this at convention. I went to a bead convention one time. And um, it's like a velvety. The beads don't tend to roll off of here as, as easily as they do on a flat surface. Um, so I'm not going to count anything. What I'm going to do is just roll these here to kind of see, I don't think I'm going to put lava beads on this one. I'm going to put it on the next one. And I actually am not going to use that turtle. I'm going to use this Hamsa hand because this is new. I haven't used that yet. Um, I just got it today. I have a lotus pendant as well that I thought I could use. Um, but I think the Hamsa hand is calling me. There's just some silver metal here that I was going to see if I could break it out. These are silver plated. Anyway, there's a hole going through so it would sit this way. And then I just pulled different things that I want to use. I'm going to put my a little owl. I'm going to zoom in and show you what these look like up close. I have a tiny little amethyst bead that's going to go in the middle of my hamster hand. Um, I have some other filler I have little turtles I think I'm gonna use the little turtles at on the side here I'm gonna put this owl and I'm going to yes so this is gonna be my amethyst bracelet um, no also don't mind my fingernails guys I'm in bad shape I have I have to let these grow out somehow I've been destroying them by using fake nails. All right, so let's come in here now. I'm gonna put these in the spot, in the center. Kind of just get them where I think. I'm gonna put one of them there. I'm gonna put a turtle facing each other right there. Yeah, I think that's what it's gonna look like. And I'm gonna put the owl at the back, so kind of kind of evenly spaced. So let's count now. Six, 
seven, eight, nine. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. And an owl. So I think that's going to be about a seven inch bracelet. So I got four leftover beads from that strand for $2.99 that I can put in my stash to use at another time. Um, and I'm ready to string. Now, let's talk about the string for a sec. When you go to the bead section, you will find this is Stretch Magic. This is Stretch Magic. It's just much older because I just bought one of each of these um, new ones. I bought a 0.7 millimeter and a 0.5 millimeter. And the higher the number, the thicker the cord. So I would tend to use this on a thicker beading project if my beads are heavier. Um, so for instance, on most of these ones that I used a 10 millimeter bead, I used a the thicker cord. And I can't always hide my knot, but I try. And I'm going to show you how I would do that. But then on the smaller bead bracelets, like this guy, I would have used the smaller um, cording. But, I mean, use what you have. As long as the hole, so the 7 millimeter um, strand fits through all of these beads. All the big, small, all of it. I can use the bigger, the thicker 7 mil um, on... The, these bracelets right here, but I'm going to use the thinner one, and I don't know, it's personal preference is, t is part of it too, and you just don't want to tug on them, you really just want to slide it over your hand to put it on, and it just fits, like it doesn't really hang down for me, like I can fit a finger under there. Actually, this one was a little smaller, mine has a little bit more room, so see, I can really fit like they don't have much give, but um, I like a seven inch, but not real rolly down. Now it's personal preference. So um, like if I'm making these for strangers, it is what it is. I don't know. But if I were making them custom, I could, you know, make them exact. So, all right. So drops these. I'm just going to put these away. I don't want to have my desk all cluttered. So. I just take about like a 10 inch piece, which is even too long. Oh, I also have been using my glossy accents to kind of lock the, um, let me just grabbing a pin. Like I just have a head pin. So when I'm tying my knot at the end, I'll use a little dab of glossy accents to kind of just glue the knot shut. That's, I don't know, I've heard. People use um, nail polish, like you could just use clear nail polish if you want. Um, so I am going to go through the process. Now, first of all, I want to look and see if there's anywhere I could hide the knot. Yeah, it's not looking like I'm going to be able to hide the knot. Okay, so what I mean by that is, I'll do it on this one. When I put this bead, which is, this is like to hold um, a charm. So, there's, see look how big that hole is. I could easily tie the knot and then the string will go behind there and it'll hide the knot. And I'll show you what I mean when I make <clears throat> the bracelet. But for this one, it's, it's just, I don't really have anywhere specific that I can hide the knot. Um, so I'm just going to start beading. I'm going to see what it looks like. Maybe... If I tied the knot here, eh, there's really not much room for it to go in there. Um, so let's see, do I want to, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do all this on camera. I'm going to come back when I'm uh, all strung and I'll show you how I tie the knot. Now, this one is kind of cool because there's a, uh, the Hamsa hand has a, uh, let me just show you with this, um, needle. So you can see the needle through the hole, but I'm going to string a bead on there. So you want to go through this part of the hole, then through the bead that you want to put, and then gently find your hole again. And then I can have a little amethyst in the middle. And I think that's a four millimeter amethyst in there, and these are eight 
millimeters, let me see. This, this is six millimeters, six millimeter sunstone. Sunstone is so gorgeous, you guys. Look at that flat flash right there. Oh man. It's it's a new stone for me, but I am loving it. So all right. So let me come back. So here's my little design. And I'm not in the shot there, so I'm gonna just push this up. Okay. And I'm gonna go in this side of the Hamsa hand. The cord is this is the thinner cord, so you just it's a little fudgy, but I can get it. Then I'm going to thread it through my little amethyst. And then I have to find this top part of the um, Hamsa hand hole. And there it is. So that's done. I just have to pull it through, and there we have it. And I'll just show you. This is what my centerpiece, my center. And there's so much more you could do. I have lots of filler beads, meaning um, all types of things you could do. Um, as far as the style you want to achieve, right? So that's going to be my center um, piece on my bracelet. And I'm just going to put amethyst, and then I'm just going to put this little guy instead of a charm, because I would put this behind it if I was going to put a charm dangle, which I'm going to do on my sunstone one. All right, so I'm going to come back when it's all beaded, and I'm ready to tie my knot, and I'll show you how I do that. All right, I'll be right back. All right, it's all strung. I added two more beads, so I had nine and now there's 10. And I'm right at seven inches, which I think is gonna be perfect for me. I have two beads left from that strand. So right now we're at three, six, nine, twelve dollars And the string, which is probably at least three to five. So we're at 17. So I can see how it costs $17, but the thing is, I can make many more bracelets with the Hamsa hand, um, the turtles, and the owls, and the string. So it's, it pays you to, to make it yourself. I don't want to take away from anyone who's doing this to sell, and people don't want to make it themselves. That's the thing. So there's your audience right there, but when you do like to do it, which I do, that's why I was like, why am I buying these? I can customize it to my liking and put what I want on my bracelet. Now this one does not have lava beads, but I have on my cross one, I have the lava beads. Um, so I don't put them on every bracelet, but I do like having them and I have them, I have plenty on here on my other bracelets, so I chose not to on this guy. And I think it's super cute, so let me show you how I tie it. All right, let's show you that again. So. You have, I did it without telling you, um, you have your two ends, all right? It's a little fudgy to do. I'm going to get my glue ready. Just open that up. So I'm going to take the two ends, cross them over, and my finger, let me come down a little bit. My finger is underneath the crisscross right now. I'm going to go inside and grab and now there's a one crisscross knot right there. Now I take my finger again, and I'm gonna make another one. It's a little fudgy, just keep, do, just do it. And I have, so now I have one crisscross knot right here and one crisscross knot right here. I think they're called hand over hand or something like that. So now, before I tighten it, I take a little bit of this glue, and this happens to be glossy accents. It's a, um, it's a great glue. Um, it's a clear, um, it can do, let's see, acid-free, non-toxic, clear dimensional medium, um, but it's also a glue. And I'm just gonna move my finger out of the way a little bit and put a dab of that glue right on that bottom knot, and then pull. Now there's two knots there, and I generally will do three. There's no rules, but I'll just take my ends and go over, over, and with the thicker cord, three gets kind of bulky, and then I'm just kind of picking up the glue. But the glue that's on there, it is stuck, and this is not making a big bump. Okay, I'm very excited. So I'm going to hold this. Now let me come in close so you can see. Let me let it uh, focus. Okay, there. So you can see my knot, 
and you see the two ends. I'm taking my scissors and I'm going really close, but there's definitely little ends that I'm going to leave. I'm not butting right on the knot. Like there's little antlers or little antennas. That's the ends. And then, I mean, this knot is really hidden pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. It's just right up against my owl. And so let me come back up a little bit. But this is my bracelet now. I have my little owl. And I like how his little horns, I picked the one because there were two. This one's just a little straighter up and down with the big eyes. But I like this one because he kind of has a similar look to the Hamsa hand with those pointy eyes. So anyway, it's personal preference. All right. So I'm going to just gently push it. I'm going to go this hand. Push it up over my hand, and voila, it fits perfectly. It's not pulling, it's just sitting on my arm, and I love it. I'm very happy with it. I'm so glad I got to use turtles, a Hamsa hand, and that's my new amethyst bracelet that I will be wearing. I'm going to show you now how I would add a charm and the lava beads. Okay, same thing. This is still a six millimeter bead. I'm just admiring it. It's so cute. So I really like it. So for $17, I got the exact thing that I wanted to do. Um, you know, the exact now. For my glue, I forgot to mention this. Oh, good. Hold it upright and just let it burp it. Burp the bottle so that it doesn't get clogged. It's just been my experience that it dries in there and then you have to, when you're ready to glue, it's not ready. It's just a bit problem. All right. So let me roll these over here into my little um, alleyway for the to measure, and I'm going to use a big turtle this time. And this is funny because it has the um, so I'm going to have to decide where to knot this. But look how it goes sideways. See how like he's kind of on an angle. So it's, it's de a decent size hole. So I'm thinking I might be able to hide my hole, um, hide my knot in there, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna put them here like that. And then I'm gonna use the lava beads. So I like to put them either right next to, or I use a little bead. Let me think. Um, see, did, here I did right next to, but I used a little silver spacer. Um, on this one, just right next to my center. But because this is so weird shaped, I'm wondering if the bead, so you know what I'm gonna do just to show you what I'm talking about? I'll come in. What I'm wondering is how it's gonna sit once the bracelet is made. So I'm gonna take a lava bead, a sun bead, Sunstone and put this on here so I can see how it's going to lay once I get it made. So yeah, there's definitely room to put a little silver bead in there so that I don't see the wire, the cording. So I'm going to go into my stash and look for um, a small filler bead. So this is not, uh, this is, um, Mostly my, I have hematite. I have some small hematite. Now would that look cool? I think I could use that. I'm gonna leave that out and I will check my other boxes. I should have some tiny little silver beads. And I'll show you. Okay, so I have all different sizes of filler beads and even some that are made of glass let me just see okay I see a tiny little one in here because I, I don't know um, I just regrouped all my stuff and I'm thinking I might want this size and I have no nails so I'm just using okay good let me see if I have one more in here that I can use I'm going to use these. Now, these could possibly be sterling silver. 
because I ordered them from, let me see what this says, Silver Round Smiley Face Beads. So I just use bags that, um, so this is the hematite, and I kind of like it. I'm kind of curious what that would look like. Um, but I am going to be using these little flower beads as my spacers because I think they look really tropical. Um, going to put... I have these, this too. Doesn't that look kind of almost like a hibiscus? I think I want to put this on the back. So I think that's what it's going to look like. Now I just have to decide. This is the tiny little bead that I'm talking about. That I'm just going to fill that space um, right next to. I think this is going to, oop, that's a little bigger. And these are just... I've used these over and over and scooped them up and put them in the bag and I don't know they're all, they're from all different places at this point um, they're dented they're not dented because when I used crimp beads I used to squish them uh, so just bear with me I'm gonna find them and I'll be right back okay I actually have some tiny bicone these aren't as tiny as I would need but these are bicone crystals that, again, I've pulled so many things from my stash, you guys. I've been doing this, and I want to say it's been 15 years since I first started buying beads and having beads in my stash. So it could be from any number of places. Um, that could really be pretty. It's just that it's going to go up against lava beads, and they are going to get oil on them. So they, I don't need to use them right now. This is what I was talking about. These are in your craft department, in your bead section in the craft department. These are glass, little tiny e-beads. And I use these a lot as filler. This is also a really handy tool I wanna to show you. I think I got this at um, a bead fest too. It's like a little triangle, but I can pick up beads very easily and put them in a baggie. So just FYI, these exist. I don't know that I've seen them at the craft store. Alexa, turn on the craft fan. All right. Okay. But these are what I'm talking about. And these come in tubes sometimes. They I have a huge bag of them. And I just put a few in this little bag because I have tons of these little bags. So these I will keep. I'm going to keep them in a <laughs> right where I can get to them because they were in a different bin that I had to go search. I don't think I'm going to use the hematite, which could be cool. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I have to try. This is trial and error, and I'm going to see. So I'm going to take my little stick, wherever I just put that. Oh, geez. Hold on. Here it is. And I'm just, I'm, it's, a, it's a, this is a, um, a, head, a head pin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bead, a hematite bead, and then slide on my, and see if it fills that space. And it does. It definitely does. Let me try a hematite on the other side because it's a different shape. Now that doesn't fit right in there in between his arm and head. So I'm not going to use the hematite beads. I think this little guy is going to be fine. So like I said, these are glass, little tiny beads, and they will work fine for just filling that little space. Some of them are bigger than others, so, you know, use trial, oh, look at that flash. Use trial and error, that's going to be perfect. Look at that, it fits perfect. So I am going to put my lava beads on the other side of that. Now, that being said, I have all types of beads that I could be filling in here. I could put one of these hematites in between every one of these, you know, and it's going to give you a different look to your bracelet. So you're the designer. That's what I'm talking about when I say, you know, I could pay $17, but I have all this stuff and I, it finally occurred to me. Why am I ordering these beads when I can, you know, when I had this Sarah, anyway, dude, I was so excited. I was so excited to make, because I love to make stuff. Now I'm kind of thinking I might want to add these hematites in there. 
all right so I'm again I'm gonna go off camera and oh one other thing I found this peace sign I don't love it it's a charm these are both um, I like the hamster hand charm and really I just wanted to show you how I and I found this is just a little um, bling dangle but it's a little charm because if I wanted to but I'm not gonna put a charm on here I'm not gonna do it I'm gonna put this flower because I think that's gonna it gives it such a tropical feel and I just really like that all right I'll be back all right I am in love guys listen this is so hard for me too because every like everything I make it's my baby but I love that look at that little additional black hematite in there I just love it okay so what I did was I'm gonna make the knot where that those petals kind of connect so again I take each side and do a crisscross knot and let it pull it together and let my finger kind of sit there oops then I'm gonna make another one with my finger leaving my finger in there so it doesn't tie the knot yet so just holding the ends my fingers in the middle so I have two crisscross knots then I like pull my finger out and take my glue and this is what I'm talking about if you're if your glue's not ready you just have to <laughs> pause and my glue is ready put a little dab and then I pull the knot and I'm gonna make another one so I actually make three little overhand 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 knots and I think that's gonna fit right in there right between those petals because the other hole was at the tip of a petal and it came out on the other side so I think that's a perfect fit so let's cut this and I'm gonna show you how this one's a little big for me but I thought you know what it's not I'm gonna give it away possibly or you know we'll see what happens but right now I'm collecting them so here let me come in and show you here is how that turtle is sitting because we added that little filler bead so now it kind of sits better it's not flipping around I ended up putting the lava beads right next to him and then putting the flower beads there I just played around and then that's just how it turned out um, I put one of the hematite beads in between each of the sunstone beads and then one of these new flower petal beads flower beads so let's see I love it I'm gonna come up I'm so sorry I love it though like guys it's a little big for me I would say because like I said I that's just your personal preference how you like like them to fit how you like your bracelets to fit I like it just just one finger like I could put two probably so that's it now I did want to share one other thing if you don't have any of these um, I don't remember what they called it but it's a it's a it's a charm holding bead okay so what I mean is I'm gonna go into my bead box here and show you um here I had some in my stash so it's a little bead that you put on your bracelet and then you can attach a charm to it so that is a very handy way to go you don't have to do that what I noticed was and this is I noticed it from looking at how other people string beads when I buy them when I buy a bracelet or whatever um, you can also and here's another I want to show you I tried I used the um, 0 0.7 street uh, stretchy cord on this one and I thought it it might find its way into this silver beads hole but it's just too big so it's kind of right there you know I don't mind it though like I think on my bracelets um, I'm gonna show you on my specific bracelet I probably hid the knot inside one of those or these had big holes I know that I did that oh here's my knot on my sand on my sunstone bracelet right here I just didn't have a place to stick it so it's right up against my flower but I don't mind you know I mean because it's mine I really don't mind but even if I were selling it, it, it it's like I just 
you have to have a knot. I mean, it's the nature of the beast. If you want an elastic cord, that's how, that's how you do it. All right, so here's what I wanted to show you about uh, putting a charm on. So here's an amethyst bracelet that I did. And for the center piece between the lava rocks, I put a charm. And to do that, I just put two silver round beads. And then I just put a jump ring around my charm and put it right there. So it has a little station that it's at, right? It's not just naked between the lava rocks, which I mean, you could do too, because look at this one. I put my little angel, I made this little angel, I took the wings and I put a, a, a howlite bead there and I think that's called a cat's eye bead. Um, and I gave him a little halo. And then there are two of these tiny little glass beads that I was showing you, these guys these little tiny glass beads. I just put two of them in between two of the regular beads just so he had a little station to hang so it could move a little freely um, on there. But I didn't have, I mean I think I did have a couple but I didn't like them. This is kind of a prettier one. It has a little bit of more of a design to it. So in the future I would use that because I have them now. So I didn't have them but it you can still put a charm even if you don't have those fancy beads just by doing that. But um, for this bracelet, I created the station. So here's two little silver beads for my name bracelet. This is um, cat, um, tiger's eye beads. And I did like four silver, four silver, two station, two silver. So it just turns out that that was just my size. So I'm going to add a little butterfly, um, I have a jump ring here, and I wish I had the one, I have the smallest jump ring and then this one, and there's one right between this that I would prefer to use, but I don't have it, so I'm going to use this. Now when you open a jump ring, you need two sets of pliers, and you don't pull away, you want to twist it. So you find the opening. Now, this is not called a jump ring. It's called a split ring. It's already been cut, so I just twist away from itself. So you go like this, so that it has an opening. I'm going to put my butterfly on there, and I'm going to put it right at that station. Let's see which way I want to go. I just slide the jump ring over that and then close it. You just swivel back. It's a little um, off. I'm just going to swivel back a little, make sure that they're lined up. There we go. And you need good eyes to do that, but now I have a little butterfly on my bracelet, and it just has a free place to, um, to fly. <laughs> so what did I have? What's, where's my other bracelet? I had this, this, oh, and my Cruz. I call it a cruz because Maya, when she was growing up, she called it a cruz because she has a little Spanish accent, but she's now she's American now. But anyway, that's that, you guys. I hope that was helpful. And I mean, just know that uh, if you're not the type that's going to want to go out and make it yourself, just buy it and enjoy it. That's all that matters. Also, use what you have. You don't need to use what I have. Just use what you have, and you can come away with a really pretty cute bracelet that you can wear. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching.